every time I preach, I do this. I make a shirt. I, I think Susie was talking about it in the stream earlier on. And here's the shirt for today. It's the first shall be last. If you play Mario Kart, you know what the you know what the blue shell means. I'm going to share a bit about it as I get into my message. But we're, we are going through the series of Luke. We're going to continue to go. We're going we're going um, um chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And um, if you want to open your Bibles, you have a Bible. Open up to Luke 9:44. I'm going to read the, the whole part of the scripture, and then we're we're going to, we're going to get into it. It says, while everyone was marveling at all that Jesus did, he said to his disciples, listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. But they did not understand what he, this meant. It was hidden from them. So they did not grasp it, and they were afraid to ask him about it. Verse 46, an argument started among the disciples as to which one of them would be the greatest. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, um, and one of the interpreters says, knowing their hearts, it says too also, took a little child and um, had him stand beside him. Then he said to them, whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For it is the one who is least among you that is the that um, the least among you who um, all who is the greatest. Verse 49, Master, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in, in your name and we tried to stop him because he is not um, one of us. Verse 50, do not stop um, Do not stop him, Jesus said, for whoever is not against you is for you. I know I read a whole lot there. I'm going to get in, I'm going to get into it. Today I want to talk to you about the first shall be last. You can see in, the, in this scripture at the start of it, right, Jesus, Jesus had done some amazing things, right? He had just healed a boy. He, 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 he was doing miracles, right? And in spite of, if people were marveling at it, you've seen the, in the first part of that scripture, but he was telling, listen carefully, he, he was telling the disciples, like, listen, like, you know, it's not always going to be like this. Stuff's gonna, stuff's going to happen. I'm going to. I'm going to. And he actually mentioned this before um, earlier in Luke that he, the Son of Man, would have to die. And so they're, they're not grasping all this. They're not even seeing what's going on. But it really amazes me in in, in, the, in the verse 46 how they're they're already arguing because they're seeing all they're seeing all that Jesus had done. I'm just laying the foundation here. All that he's done, all the miracles. All, all man, like and they're thinking, wow, we're going to we're we're connected to this guy. You know, it's like it's like being connected to somebody that's really powerful and thinking like, well. Where's my place? Where, where, where am I gonna? Where, where, where am I gonna be? You know, uh, um, when, 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 Lord, when you take over, when you know, and they had this idea that Jesus was gonna, was gonna take over, was gonna be like, you know, God, because he is. They realized who he was, God Almighty, but that he was gonna take over and rule, right? But they didn't realize that Jesus was the perfect Lamb that had to be slayed, and so like, and Jesus was trying to tell them, but they yet it was hidden from them, and they hadn't grasped it, and then here, the, here they are arguing, and so I want to bring out a couple things today about the word of God. And it's contrary to the what, the what the world has taught us, right? Because growing up, it's like, man, get yourself out there. Stop, promote, be, be, be the greatest, be the goat, you know, go go after it, be, be, you know, be the greatest that there can be, you know, you know, whether it be in sport. I know when I was playing um, baseball when I was younger, you know, oh, you want to be the, I'm going to be the greatest at this. I'm going to, or whether it be, whatever it may be, when we have this idea of greatness, yet Jesus brings it here and he's flipping it all on its head. And so I want to bring that out. So the first thing I want to do, the fact that, that true, this is my first point, greatness in God's sight can only come through true humility. And this is not a popular thing to preach about, <laughs> but we're going we're, we're gonna to dive into it, you know? And I know I know AJ's going to be tested on this. Whenever you preach stuff like this, you're going to get tested on it. But true humility. And, and, and what does that look like, right? By the world's standards, right? Like I said, the world will tell you, you know, um, uh, that this is nonsense. The, the world will tell you be aggressive, you know, self-promote. Um, 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 that's that's the um, self-esteem um, is the key to success, and and then we see it the day and generation we're living in. It's all about self, right? The selfie was invented, and you know the rest, right? That's all we that's, that's all we ever see is is selfies on the internet, <laughs> pictures of people's self. It's it's all about loving loving yourself and and being the best you can be and being the goat. And there's no nothing wrong with loving yourself, but there comes a point where man, that guy loves himself a little bit too much. You ever you ever see that, or he thinks too highly of himself. And God's flipping on his head here, and, 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 and the disciples, having seen all the miracles, seen all that God has done, and yet God's telling them, like, this ain't how it, it, it ain't always going to be like this, because they had crowds surrounding them. It, it, it probably felt good to be, you know, th those guys, but not realizing what was to come. And see, us as Christians, we're never going to experience the fullness of success in anything in this world, because this world is temporal. All, all, all this world has to offer will fade away. It's it's gone. It, it's it's here today and it's gone tomorrow. It's, you buy a new car, the minute you drive that new car off the lot, it loses its value by 10 grand. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because the things of this world don't last. 
So we're never going to experience the success and the greatness that God has for us until we step into eternity with God. Now, we are going to be successful in this earth. God is with us. He's given us abundant life. But we'll never experience the fullness of it, right? What does the Bible say? Those who humble themselves, God, it will exalt. We'll never ex ex experience the fullness of the ex being exalted until we reach heaven, right? Now, I'm going to get more into that. But the first thing is greatness in God's sight comes can, can only from, from humility. And this is not a popular thing to preach about. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to hear this. People want to hear, you know, what am I going to get out of this? How, how, how am I going to be the greatest? What does it have to offer me? You know? What, and you see it within our sports, right? Recently, I'm, I'm a Liverpool supporter, and we're trying to sign this guy for a – it's 110 million British pound. I think it's like $140 million, right? And we're, we're, we're trying to sign this guy, and I'm praying that we do sign it because I, I, like, I, like, I like the sports, right? But he can't agree to personal terms with Liverpool. He doesn't want to go to Liverpool. He wants to go to London, right? He wants he, he what, what 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 better does you know? He's looking at the, like it's well. The offer is better over here. It, it, it looks it looks better over here. What what can I get out of this? And that's many how our generation think. Uh, I'm going to come to the Lord, but I want all the blessings and everything that comes with it. I, I want the title. And these disciples, having seen all the miracles, have, 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 have been walking with Jesus. This was a year before Jesus was to be crucified. And Jesus is laying the foundation, letting them know that I'm, I'm the, I'm, I'm the Son of Man. Is gonna, and they're still not grasping it. Still, they're arguing amongst themselves, who's going to be the greatest? What, what can I get out of this? Lord, I'll break, and, and many times it can be like that for us. What am, Lord, what do you have to offer me? What am I going to get out of this? But if we're looking at the example from Christ, to be the greatest means to humble thyself. Not what I'm going to get, but Lord, you've given me so much already. Like that song today, is it's your air in my lungs. Real, coming to the realization that the reason why you woke up this morning is because God allowed it. Even if you don't believe in him, let me tell you today, God is a generous God. Even if you're an enemy of God, he's still giving people their air in their lungs. How loving and forgiving God is he? But when you come to the realization of understanding that who he is, and, and he created us, humbling ourselves to saying, God, man, you are the way, you are the truth, you are the life. This world, this temple stuff has nothing to offer, yet we chase it all, right? We, it is, it's nice to have those nice things or have that nice car or that new iPhone, but we don't find ful ful fulfillment in that. That stuff's nice, and that's why Jesus here in this scripture, he, he's showing a couple of things. He's showing that Look at, uh, no, no, the, my second point is every sin and evil deed has its root in personal pride. This is a deep message, right? <laughs> this is usually AJ, AJ don't like this. Uh, you know, I, I like to come in with the, with, with, with the, with the, you know, the good stuff, right? This is, this is the deep stuff right here. This is cut, this is even cutting me, right? <laughs> because many times you say, how AJ, how, how is this possible? Because anytime we put our desires, our lust, what we want before the desires of God were it's personal pride. You can see it happening back in, the garden, right? When they, when Adam and Eve, they want to be like, they, what, what can I get out of this? And it's that personal pride that it all stems for. Because we think, I, I'll do it my way, you know, Lord. I, I know what your word says. I, I know, I, I know that you know you're holy, and I, you call me to be to live this holy life. But you know, I'm gonna do it my way. I've, I've gotten by this way so long, and we don't. And a lot of times, pride often is blinding. We don't see it, right? And our personal pride is. It, it, it leads us into into sin. It, 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 pride is like honestly, it's, it's it's a killer. It's a killer of Christians. Pride is what caused Lucifer to be cast down from heaven. Pride is what's going to stop many people from entering into heaven. Why? Because they're too proud to realize their need for God. Let me tell you, I grew up in the church. Like I, 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 I I've never really experienced. I mean, I've had some bad times in my life, but God's always had that hedge of protection. I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for it. But in, in, in saying that though. I, I, I could have had a pride saying, you know what, I'm going to do this on my own. And I have, I have achieved stuff on my own, on my own abilities, but it only got me so far until I came to the realization that I can't do this life without you, Lord. Lord, I, I, I don't want to get by one day without you. And that's why in this scripture, God is using the example of a child. He pulls a young child next to him. Why? Because this child has no like big name. He's not the goat. He's, he's, he has no big achievements. But what, what, why is the Lord bringing this young child and showing this is who's going to be the greatest? What, why, why is that? Because it's not about your, your title. It's not about what you achieved. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And it's nice to have achievements. If, if you're an athlete or, or you, you've done some great things, or you, it's nice to have that stuff. But you got to understand that the only reason why you have that 
The only reason why you have air in your lungs today is because our God in heaven, God Almighty, he gave you the ability to do that, giving him the glory. Understanding that, look at I, I, I don't have it all together, God. It's only through you, only through, through, through your son that I even have a chance. Understanding that. And many people, because of the pride of life, because personal pride will never see this. They say, they, the, 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 the Bible talks about the foolish man says, there is no God. I don't need God. But when the evidence is all around us, it's just there everywhere. Everywhere you look at, uh, you go out in all creation, like it's too perfect. I, I, I trip out people are like, this all happened by accident. We have a blazing ball of fire in the sky. We, we, we're, we're, we're flowing through space. We, the, it's just too perfect. Like the way oxygen, you, you break it down, it's just, it had to have a designer. It's just too perfect. When you come to that realization that there is a God in heaven who created you, there is a God in heaven who has a plan for you, there is a God in heaven who has eternity in store for you, you can't help but to humble yourself and say, God, you are God Almighty. You are the one. And in saying that, Lord, how can I be a service to you, Lord? How can I use my life coming for you humbly, Lord? What can I do, Lord, to serve you, Lord? And that's that's the big thing right there, right? <laughs> that's a whole other mess. I can get into that whole other message with that. But Lord, how can I be pleased you with my gifts? How can I please you with my life? How can I use my gifts to serve others? That's what Christ was all about. It wasn't about um, I, myself, all about me. It was always about what? Love God and love others. Love others. Put others before yourself. See, here in Luke, they had seen the marvelous things Jesus was doing. They had seen all the miracles. Even the crowds were marveling. And yet the disciples are still missing the mark. They're like, who's going to be the greatest? I want to be the greatest. And it's that personal pride. And Luke um, 9, 23 um, you can see Jesus is saying, if anyone wishes to come after me, let them deny himself and take up the cross daily and follow me. See, it's not always going to be easy. I'm telling you, being a Christian, people think, man, oh, being a Christian, it's going to be like running to the daisies. It's going to be all good. Yeah, you ever see those in the movies? They run to the daisies. They're all happy. They're, they're just happy. And I tell you, being with God, it, there's times that it's like that, but sometimes it's hard. There's sometimes when the, when, 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 we, uh, uh, with, with our pride and our, and our issues, right? We want to do things our way, like the, like Frank Sinatra saying, some of you older generation know, right? I did it my way, right? We want to do it our way. But this scripture here in Luke is talking about denying ourselves, picking up our cross. And even the, 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 them not even understand, like the, them not, they, they, even though being with Jesus, not understanding what it was going to, what it was going to take, right? And, and in verse 24 of Luke, is, uh, 9, 24, it says, for whoever wishes to save his life, shall lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. You know, um, like I said, this shirt right here, right? The blue shell, you guys, I'll talk about it now. You guys know what the blue shell means, right? I was first in the race. I, I played Mario Kart with my kids. I was tearing it up, guys. I was getting all proud, like, yeah, I'm going to win this. And my daughter threw a blue shell at me. And the first shell come last. Yeah, the blue shell hits the first person of the race. And they shall be last. <laughs> Anybody play Mario Kart here? Huh? I, I tell you, I can't stand that blue shell, right? And underneath there, I have look at greatness in the sight of God. You know, it, it, it is. It feels good to come first, right? It feels good to, to but you know what? Honestly, serving others is, is, a, is a great reward in itself. I'll tell you right now, like you know, that's all. That's, that's all I want from my life. How, how, how can I be a service? How can I help you? What, what can I do? You know, and many times we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't do that. That's, that's not even a question in our thing. How, how can I help my neighbor? How can I help my friend? I tell you by help. One thing you could do is help, help your friend or your neighbor that you're praying for. Invite them to church. Invite them to the service. Get, get them connected to God Squad Church. Get them in here. Let them hear the word of God. Let them, let them experience. I'm, I, 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 God's not limited to, to, you know, um, um, a, a certain space. Like, even, even here doing worship, you, you can feel his presence. Why? Because it, God's presence is with us. We are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And, I, and as you invite, as, as, you, as you continue to put, man, I, I know that friend that, that's been struggling. Like, like before service, I, I, I post in my Discord. I, I post people, like, come hang out. Come, come check out God's squad. I, want, I don't want nobody missing out. I know God has something for them. I'm, I, I, we really know God has something. God is real, and he has something for you each and every day. And it's, and it's, and it's really, it's all about, man, others. How, how, how can I help my friend? How can you want to help them? 
introduce them to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You, you, you really want to help them. Let them hear the word of God. You really want to help them. Let them experience what God has for them. You know, it's about denying ourselves, picking up that cross, putting others before ourselves. You know, and, and we, we, can, we, we can forget this. These, these simple principles we can forget. We can forget. <clears throat> My third point is only God knows the heart. See, when they were there arguing against, uh, amongst each other, right, it says that God knew what they were thinking. God knew what was in their heart. Many times because, you know, only God, God's the only one. In, in, in Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, the heart is more deceitful than all else and is def that's desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart. Only he can know the heart. Let me tell you a day, you know, we can hide it from our friends, our family, but it, and we can even say to ourselves, I'm not prideful. And that, that alone, right? I, I remember growing up, my dad used to say, don't be, don't be, don't, don't be full of pride, um, AJ, or, he's, you know, he called me, um, or Andrew, or Andy. I have so many names. But don't be full of pride. And I'm like, I'm not, I got no pride. And that, that instantly is pride, right? <laughs> when somebody says, I'm not prideful. And instantly, like, you're showing, you're showing that you're full of pride, you know? Because only, only God knows the heart. And <clears throat> even through his word is what we put into our heart. Right, what we put in our heart overflows from our mouth, and that's why it's so important to 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 let God search our hearts, let, let humble ourselves, and it takes that it takes a humility to, to come before the Lord and say, Lord, search me, search. Me. Is there anything in my heart? Is there anything that's that, that's that's causing for all this to be going on? Because sometimes all this stuff's happening in our lives, and we're going through these things, and and we're like, why why is this happening? Because a lot of times God is trying to get our attention. We haven't been seeking. We haven't been putting them first. We've been off track. We've been we we we've been just doing our own strength. We we've been running in our in a in a in a, in a prideful state. You say no, no, I don't, I don't got pride, but we have. We've been doing it in our own strength. We're saying, in other words, I don't I don't need you, God. I'm gonna do this all by myself. And what we're doing is we're filling up all the wrong stuff. We're just getting by. We'll, we'll just get by a little bit here. I'll just I'll just attend church on the weekend. That, that that'll be enough. You know, I'm getting my, getting that off my list. But it's so much more than that. God has so much more for you. Don't sell yourself short. He has so much more for you. And let, 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 let him do that deep work. Let, let, him, let him search your heart. Let him check it out. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is continue to fill up on, on the right things. It's like the analogy of a fast car. You can have a super fast car, right? A nice car so for you that, like, that, that love cars out there. Personally, I, I do like cars, but the only nice, nice car I had was an Audi. And that was like... But if, if, if it was a diesel engine too, if I put gas in that engine, what would happen? It wouldn't run. It would, it would break down. And us as Christians, if we come out filling up on, on the things of this world, right? If we become lovers of this world, the stuff that's only temporal, that ain't going to last, we're going we're, we're, we're gonna to break down. We're, we're going we're, we're, we're to be on the side of the road out of commission. But we fill up on God. We put the right stuff in that, in, in, in that fast car, what it, what it, what it, what it needs. Then you're gonna see it re reaches full potential, right? That thing's gonna go. Nier. My my car used to be like. Nier. It was it was like a jet taking off, even though it was diesel. It was it was nice, but it, 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 if if we fill up on the wrong things in this life, if we keep on filling, if, if we put God on the on the back burner, if we don't come before Him every day, humble our humble. That's it's a humbling ourselves. It's saying, God, I'm putting you first. I'm 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 gonna humble myself. Understand that I need to put you center of my life. I don't need Netflix. I don't need Disney Plus. I don't need a Amazon Prime. <laughs> I want to put you for. I'm going to fill up on you. I'm going to, I'm going to take time today, Lord, to spend with you. See, only God knows the heart, and He searches it. And that's why, in, in, in that Psalm, it's like, it, 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 "Search me, O Lord." I, like, if there's anything in my heart, that should be our attitude as Christians. Is there anything that? Is there any pride? Am I doing this on my own strength? Am I doing this on my own ability? Is is that why I keep on failing? Many times it is. When I used to fall flat on my face over and over again, it was like, what's going wrong here? Is there something not right? It was, it was, it's the definition of man is trying to do the same thing, hoping for different results. It's time now to trust the Lord, to put your faith in him. Proverbs 3, 5, trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, not, in all your ways, let him search your heart. You know, there's, there, we, there's things we can hide from our family, from our friends. And I, and I grew up in church. I knew how to hide stuff. I grew up in church because... I knew how to how, how to how to do all the actions, how to say the amens at the right time. Like I always, like like many of us know, they grew up in church, 
but I wasn't letting God do that, that, that work on my heart. And Jesus, knowing the thoughts of their heart, knowing what they were thinking, he was telling me, it's, it's not all about you. It's all about others. Like this child, whoever, it, 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 with no, he, he, it's not about the title that I get. It's not about me getting famous. It's not about the recognition that I want. Many times, and it's nice to get that little pat on the back, but that's not what we're living for. We're living for the audience of one. Lord, am I pleasing to you? And this is us. I'm talking, I'm talking to the ones that have been saved a long time, that, 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 that know. They've been, they've been living this life that, that have been through some battles. We got to ask ourselves, Lord, have I, have I been pleasing to you? Am I aren't you in my life? Luke 9, 48, and he said to them, whoever receives the child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. We know this, you know, God, God uses, God can use anybody. And use the foolish things of this world, right? We, we read to his word. And the reason why, the reason why he does it, it's not, it's not all, you know, he uses, he also uses guys with big names, but more often than not, he uses the most unlikely candidates. And I tell you, people look at look at look at look, look at a lot of us uh, uh, unlikely, and that's why he's going to use. That's why we're going to see an outpouring of the spirit. I believe here on Twitch, we're going to see salvation. We're, it's not nothing that we did. Maybe people consider gamers sometimes lazy. We have, we have this bad thing, like you know, when you tell people you're a gamer, you're a gamer. Like what? Like you know, they had this bad thing. We live in our mom's basement, but it's not true. <laughs> and God uses the most unlikely candidates. Why? Because we know who our God is. We've humbled ourselves. We know. I can't do this life without you, Lord. Why? So he gets all the honor. He gets all the glory. My last point is this. All who receive Christ will be great in heaven. And there is no place for personal pride in that. I want to say this, you know. Throughout the scripture, you see it. It's, it's like an, it's, it's an overwhelming thing, right? Matthew nineteen thirty: Many who are first will be last. That's it, that's it, right? And many who are you know many who are first will be grab hold of that. It's not about title. It's not about who I am, right? In, in Matthew twenty twenty six: Whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slate. It's like, man, it, it, the Lord's flipping everything on its head, right? Like, what, man, this is, and it, it actually, like, it's, it goes against everything we were taught. Even, even, even hearing this, like, some of you, it's like piercing the heart, <laughs> is it? right? Mark 9, 35, if anyone wants to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. First Peter 5, 5, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Let me tell you, <laughs> humble ourselves. Right? We, we do it in his word in St. Chronicles. My people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Right? Humble themselves. He's, he's going to hear our prayer. He's going to hear what we have to say. If we turn from our sins, that, that's what I always say. Turn from our sins. To turn from your sin, it means to realize I am a sinner. I, I, I can't do this life without God. I messed up. I, I, I've tried to do it on my own. And I messed up time and time again. That scripture also it says that. He, that God will hear us. We open up the door when we come to the realization that we can't do this life without God. Stop doing it on your own. Tell somebody in chat, stop doing it on your own. Stop going on your own strength. I got to tell myself that. Stop doing it on your own. Humility is not something we hear in this world. It's, it's, it's like, I don't, you also, you never hear, you don't hear people talk about humility. It's like, it's like, go get it. Be the best, be the greatest. And God's here, Jesus is here, telling you, the first shall be last. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> like in the world, that doesn't the first shall be last. And, like in the world, what? What? I gotta be the first, I gotta be the greatest. It's all about others. That's what Christ was saying. It's all about others. And Philippians, one of my favorite scriptures in Philippians 2 5 says, Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. He's the greatest example of this. Who, 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 although he existed in the form of God, did not rec um, regard equality with God the thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance as a man. He humbled himself, the greatest example of this, 
by becoming obedient to the point of death, even the worst kind of death, death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, under the earth. And every tongue will acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory God of our Father. Let me tell you something. I don't know if I told you today. It's not all about you. <laughs> it's not all about it's not all about AJ. I don't even want if the people don't remember my name, I don't even care. I don't I don't want my name to be great. I want, I, I, I want to I want people to know who God is. The only way they're gonna see that is by serving others, by being that example. Let me tell you. Throughout my life, I've, I've experienced. I, I, I've, I've had. I've had business. I've had a business. I, I've, I've experienced a lot. I'm Thirty-eight years old. I've been through a lot of ups and downs. But one thing is consistent: God is faithful through it all. All I've ever done, time and time again, it's that attitude of just, man, Lord, I can't do this without you. That attitude: if I've sinned, I've fallen short. Lord, forgive me. I can't do this without you. You, you Lord. Lord, and it's that humbling of, of ourselves to admit that we're sinners. You know, you read out the Bible, you see a lot of, there's a lot of kings, these great names, right? So many, Solomon, one of the wisest, greatest kings of all time, right? Yet his wives led him astray. He led him astray at the end of his life. Why? Because he wouldn't humble himself from the realization there is no other God besides the one true God. It's David, though, David, even though he messed up, right? We, we, we have a lot to say about David. What did David do? He repented. He humbled himself. And this is not a popular message. You know, I wish I could, I wish it was always about the blessings and the abundant life, but this is the reality of it. That we're never going to experience the fullness of what God has for us in a, in a temporal earth. This earth is going to pass away, but God's kingdom is forever. When we take our last breath here and into eternity, that's when us as Christians are going to experience the fullness. So stop searching for the fullness in material things or what this world has to offer. Everything this world, it's nice to have. Yeah, sure, it's nice to have. But we know as Christians that all this is going to fade away, that it's not going to last, that we got to live with that heaven set mindset that I'm living for eternity, that I'm storing up riches in eternity. There talks about there is different rewards and there's, there's riches, but the, the, the greatest gift is that we're going to enter into eternity. I don't care if I have a, a big crown up there. I just, I just want to I, I want to get up there. I, I rejoice that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I know that I'm never going to experience the fullness of what God has, right? He says, those who humble themselves will be exalted. We're never going to experience the full exaltation of what God has for us until we reach heaven. But he is with us now as we're on earth, as we walk with him, as we continue to humble ourselves and understand who he is. So I, don't, I, I know I said a whole lot, and it's not a it's not a popular subject, humility, but it's something I think that we need to have as a church. If we want to reach this world, we need to show the love of Christ just as he did, making himself no, nothing. He emptied himself. The God of all the universe, the one who set the cornerstone in place, the one who told the seas, this is as far as you can come. The one who, with his very word, created existence. It was no accident. It didn't happen from a big bang. No, it was the very word of God. Or just, it's, it's too perfect. I, I was thinking, I was like, man, I trip out sometimes. You, you, you guys, I just like, man, Lord, it, like you created this. Like, how can I honor you, Lord? I was just seeing the yesterday. I was tripping out. My my arm was going dead. I was like, man, it's crazy. Like, how 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 much you've done, Lord? I just trip out sometimes. Like, you know, you get these. You just sit there, like, man. You know, like, I don't even know what's wrong with my arm. It, it goes dead. I have like, what do you call it? Um, carpal tunnel. <laughs> and I'm like, Lord, like, you know how this works. It's crazy. You know, doctors are still trying to figure out how our brains and stuff work. They can't grasp it. But a perfect God who did it all. And really, if you're here today and you heard all this, you, you just, you're like, man, what is this guy talking about? You know, what I'm trying to tell you is there's a God in heaven who loves you. But it takes us to understand that, to, to, to really humble ourselves and accept that. You know, you reach out the Bible, a lot of times, it's not tell something bad happens in our lives, and even with, with people in the Bible that Jesus healed when they were sick or ill, right? Maybe today you're not.